Hello, Terracon4 here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Scalable World Map project that I have and the basics of how you would set it up. Here's a basic example. Here we have Tap F11, so it's in full screen. A character who runs around, and as you can see, there's a map. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and we can also change the style of the map. Full screen. Get it, get it, get the idea. So, this is the basic idea of the scalable map act, widget actor phrase things. The basic idea is that you have a world map that this lets you easily use, and that that map can potentially have varying levels of detail. With, in this case, a grid tile, you can see each of these boxes represents one tile on the grid that we're making for this level. And one of these might very well have an image that's 512 pixels, then 1024, then 2K, then 4K, and it will load different ones depending on how close you are to them. So, the first, there's, well, three main things that we'll want to cover here. First, actually making a map for your level. Second, how to actually use the widget on your character. And third, the basic idea of returns, making actors and stuff show up on the map. So first, for the purposes of actually setting up a map for your level, you're probably going to want to use the map camera blueprint. It's worth saying those tiles, you can generate these textures any way you want. Uh, but the map camera blueprint definitely makes it a lot easier. <laughs> like, a lot. <laughs> That's why I made it. Uh, is a rough example. Here is a example of these various tiles. There's the textures. And then that's at 1K, then you got here 256. So at varying resolutions, we've got these various textures making up this map, which means that when we zoomed out in that map, it loads smaller ones, and when we zoomed in, it would load the higher resolution ones. So these were all generated using the map camera blueprint. A wonderful little actor. Drop it into the world. And you're not going to want to change the rotation. Leave it default rotation. Position it so that it's at the center of your world, or the center of your map, more at least, wherever you want your map to be in your world. Uh, make sure that it is high enough that the camera, here you can see there's a little camera up there underneath the dinosaur icon. Uh, the camera has to be above everything, or else you might see the pictures clipping through parts of your level map. So then you've got some basic options here. Let's pull that up. First, the individual tile size. In this case, we want our individual grids to have 10 meters for this. Uh, then you got grid size, 4 by 2, 2 by 2, whatever. In that case, we add it at 4 by 4 with 10, so 40 by 40 meters. You could easily just do this if you want, but that kind of gets... it's It'll work for a really small level and stuff easily, but... Uh, if you're doing a large world map with lots of places where you want it to not be loading the tiles that aren't currently on screen, then you'll want that greater amount of resolution for it to unload tiles outside of the view. But at the same time, if you try and make it so that every individual tile is like one foot in your map, so it's constantly unloading massive numbers, that will itself add more overhead. So there's the, the lucky medium, which depends on the size of your map and how fast you're moving through things and what you expect to do. Uh, so the basic, let's just go back to this, 4x4, four four. so 16 tiles would be generated here, 0 through 15, since we're using base 0. And then currently it is set to be inactive, this means that when you play the game it is not going to be taking pictures and saving them. Uh, this is used on the demo app, so right here, map camera is not active. It's not currently saving stuff. Um, resolution. We'll want to turn that on when we actually want this thing to start saving files. So resolution. The current resolution is set to up to 2K, and there's this little option, render from resolution down to minimum. Minimum resolution, 256. This means it would start rendering a 2K, then 1K, then 512, and then 256, and it will stop there. So you'll get 
uh, different resolution copies of each individual one of these grid tiles. Save image file path, in this case, my computer account, Tercon 4, desktop map tiles. So there's a folder on my desktop where it will save these two. These separate file paths for each resolution is a useful option. In this case, it's pretty much the same thing, just 8K, 4K, 2K. So there's a different folder for each of these. This will just help in organizing everything. The file names, demo map tile, and then you can have various things like include the resolution, I recommend that, add T at the end of the names, or you could do a suffix if you want instead, disable this and enable that. So you got some basic options. And the basic idea here is if you click active, and since I'm recording, this will probably get choppy here. It's going through and saving various copies of each of these. I would eventually have a, it's all done, finished message at the end, but we're not going to let it get that far. A key part, this delay time, if you're doing a really individually big tiles or a map that has a lot of stuff on it, it can for just not have enough time for the uh, render texture targets in order to actually, I'm not sure exactly what all the backend stuff goes on with them, but if it doesn't have enough time to reposition it and get the camera to take the picture and start saving, it might pull one from the previous camera's position or other issues, so this little delay time, it's just a little delay between each of those pictures being saved. If you're having issues, you might want to up this to like a value of half a second or one second or whatever. Depends on your computer and the map in question. Simple little map like this, computer like mine can easily handle this at a relatively low time. I could lower it more, but I left it at point two default so that It'll be hopefully decently safe for most people. So with this, you would have uh, textures. And in this case, we have our phrase textures. We just went into the Explorer, grabbed the files, and dra dragged the folders in here. And then if you do that, and then you go back up and back into that folder, it will show them all organized in the same folder structure as whatever you dragged in. So here we've got all of these. We've got our map tiles. How would we use them? The level map. BP is another actor. The next actor that we care about for setting up our levels map. The level map pretty much is, it doesn't actually do anything itself, it's just there for information purposes so that whenever you load a character into the level, they can just find this actor and say, okay, what are the map files that I need for this level? What is the view ranges, default view range, and all the yada yada stuff? And this will tell it that, and thanks to that, you don't have to manually set the stuff on a character. A same character actor, exactly the same, can be dropped into different levels, and it will automatically have the right stuff for each level, assuming that a level map BP has been properly set up in that level. It needs to be located at the exact same center of your map location, like you put this, the where you took your pictures. Once again, you can manually make those, but for our example, we are not, because that would take a long time. Um, so level map, in this case the map's total dimension, the map grid, it's 4x4, four four, and it was a total of 40x40. 40 40. And then there's the map parts by zoom. The first layer is your lowest resolution, in this case 256. And then each index you could add or delete as you want. In this case we've got 4, 256, 512, 1K, like you can see with these here. 1k and you start off with tile 0, tile 1, tile 2, so and so on going through these. And then here we've got the 2k ones. And then there's the resolution zoom cutoffs. This pretty much means at what point it would display these. 0 means that if a tile is any size at all, it will show these. If it gets to 256 is how big a tile is showing up on your minimap, it would then start loading that index 1, index 1. So as soon as a tile gets to this size, it would start loading this one, which is where it would have moved up to 512 from 256. Then 512, that's when it starts loading the 1Ks, and 1Ks when it starts loading the 2Ks in this case. You might not want to have them at every step along the way or whatever, but this is the basic idea of how you set this up so that it knows how to load the different tiles at different sizes default resolution is the default resolution uh, for the, the resolution the map parts by zoom variable was set to work at. So if your mini map is scaled to be bigger or smaller, then 
some of these things can work a bit differently. So this is what you assume your map to generally be. Because uh, if you've got a full screen map, it will change a bit of math, uh, which might make things not always view quite how you want it. So this is just at what resolution you assume the minimap to be for these. By the way, max view range, 10. Minimum view range, 3 meters. Default view range, 5. This just controls zooming in and out. It's just some, again, default information for that map. You might not want to zoom out as far if it's a small indoor place. So the basic part would be just once you've gotten your textures, just taking them and dragging them in. In this case, since this is the 1K, which is the third index, that would be like here's 0. That goes there. Here's 1. So find tile 1. Yeah, you get the idea. You just drag them in here and build this. You could very well only have a single array if you don't want to bother with all this stuff, but then it's there if you want it for optimizing large levels. So with that, that's the basics of how you generate texture tiles and actually plug them into the level map BP actor. So next we'll want to talk about the actual widget for the character.